Welcome to Cases of Mistaken Identity. Today's tutorial is the first in a new series based on real questions asked by my medical and dental students over the years. I'm Dr. Katherine Moore, the histology wizard. Case 1, Epithelial Subtypes. My students often have difficulty recognizing urothelium. So for case one, let's look at how to tell the difference between stratified squamous epithelium and urothelium, also known as transitional epithelium. Now before we begin, remember that these epithelia are located in different places in the body. Urothelium is only found in the excretory passages of the urinary system, so in the renal calyces, the ureters, and the bladder. Now in practice, what this means is that there will often be other clues besides morphology to help you recognize these tissues. Let's investigate. To review, stratified squamous epithelium is found throughout the body in the epidermis of skin, the cornea, the mouth, the larynx, esophagus, vagina, and anal canal. These are generally lining epithelia whose functions include protection from physical or chemical insults, microorganisms, they function in water loss prevention and often defense. So let's look at some of the characteristics of this tissue and we'll use esophagus as an example. Now first recall that stratified epithelia are classified according to the cell shape of the surface layer, that apical layer. In the case of stratified squamous epithelium, the surface cells are thin with a scale-like or squamous shape. Now this tissue also has many cell layers with basal cuboidal cells that become progressively more squamous as they differentiate and move toward the apical surface. Finally, stratified squamous epithelia can be keratinized as in the skin or gums, which helps protect against dehydration and abrasion, or non-keratinized as in the lining of your cheeks, the esophagus, or the vagina. Now let's take a look at urothelium. Recall that urothelium, as shown here in the ureter, is important for helping to keep the hypertonic urine from returning to the blood or from leaking out and damaging our tissues. To do this, it also needs to be able to distend as the bladder fills without rupturing or leaking. Therefore, the morphology of this tissue reflects these different needs. Here we see a cross-section of the ureter. Again, we first want to take a look at the cells on the apical surface. In urothelium, these cells have a very characteristic shape. They don't really look cuboidal, they don't look columnar, but they're called umbrella cells and they're unique to urothelium. These are large puffy cells at the apical surface that often bulge out into the lumen, and some people say they resemble an open umbrella. These highly differentiated cells protect underlying cells against that hypertonic urine, and they have the unique ability to increase and decrease their apical surface area with bladder filling and emptying. They do this because they contain unique intracellular junctional complexes and apical membranes, and this allows the shape to change from round to flat. Another key feature is that these cells are often binucleate, and you can go back and compare that to that most apical layer in the stratified squamous epithelium, which lacks nuclei. Urothelial cells are usually cuboidal or even columnar, and because of these shapes, they sometimes are mistaken for a pseudostratified tissue. But it's important to note that only the bottom layer of the cells is going to touch that basement membrane. In contrast, stratified squamous epithelia never contain columnar cells. Now overall, urothelium will have fewer layers than stratified squamous epithelium, but the walls will become thicker the closer you get to the bladder. And finally, urothelium is never keratinized. So let's recap and look at these tissues side by side. Both tissues are stratified, but their apical surface cells look very different with those flattened thin cells in the stratified squamous epithelia and the characteristic umbrella cells in urothelium. Overall, look for larger, more columnar looking cells in urothelium and more layers in stratified squamous epithelium. I hope these tips will help you solve this case of mistaken identity. Thanks for stopping by.